Hey guys, so Lord here, back in with another action figure review, and today we'll be taking a look at the DC Multiverse Batman Arkham City Wave Batman. Of course, we're going to start off with the Dark Knight himself, but before I get too far ahead of myself, this is of course brought to us by the fine folks over at McFarland Toys, and some of you out there are probably scratching your heads thinking, Overlord, what does this have to do with Halloween? This is Arkham City not Batman the Long Halloween, and while I do hope we eventually get a set of Long Halloween figures from McFarland Toys, the Build-A-Figure, Collect-A-Build figure, whatever you want to call it figure, of this wave is none other than the big, giant, grotesque zombie himself, Solomon Grundy, and it doesn't get more terrifying than a lumbering brute who is brought back from the dead to frickin' kill you by any means necessary. So... With that being said, I'm done explaining myself to you bitches, so before we get too far ahead of ourselves, why don't we cut right to the chase and get into the meat and taters of this review and take a look-see at all the Dark Knight has to offer in terms of accessories. Well, he's got a grapple gun at least. Very slick looking grapple gun as well. I feel like the Arkham Asylum ones was a little different, a lot bigger than that. Uh, that's what she said. That said, we of course get a collectible trading card. The bio on the back, but uh, if you don't know who Batman is, you living under a rock, son. That said, he of course comes with the trademark hockey puck display stand we're used to seeing with all McFarlane Toys releases. And for those of you who are familiar with the Batman Arkham Asylum figure, this is more of the same. The cape is different, though. It's not as big, so it takes up less room on the shelf. I do believe the gauntlets and possibly the boots are new. And then the head is the same, but they did not paint the pupils in the eyes, so you don't got to deal with that wonky eye thing going on. That said, if you want to do a head swap with this guy in Nightfall, you could probably do it and make something pretty bossin'. That said, as far as articulation on this figure goes, he's got the double ball peg in the head so he can rotate and look up a little bit. Not a ton, really. Look down, not a lot, either. The ears were a little warped. I took them out of storage, so I did try my best to straighten those out. Might need to attempt to do that again before I put them on the shelf, but uh, his shoulders will go out about the same. This one maybe a little bit more so. So we'll focus on this arm. He will rotate as well. He's got a bit of a rotated cap thing going on in the shoulder, as well as a bicep swivel. Single jointed elbow, which kind of sucks. I mean, they did retool the lower arm. The least they could have done was it's giving us a double elbow or something. Then he has a ball hinge wrist that can rotate, hinge, and rotate again. She had a fist on this side instead of a grip hand, but whatever. Torso can crunch not very far forward, not very far back either. You can tilt side to side as well as rotate. And also, of course, rotate in the waist. The hips will kick out to the side pretty far. Back down, rotate forward and back. Thigh swivels a little bit. Double knee. And he's got a ball hinge in the foot that can rotate, hinge, pivot, and then he does have the toe joints. And that is your lot. Um, that is this Batman in a nutshell. I think he's a little better than the um, Arkham Asylum one just because he takes up less real estate and he doesn't have the wonky eye thing going on. I don't recall mine having that issue, but I know a lot of people did, so I kind of get why this is the superior version. And if you have the Arkham Asylum one too, you can give him all the accessories because I think they're pretty much the same other than maybe the grapple um, changed in the uh, Arkham City game from Arkham Asylum. I think we need more Asylum figures, though. We don't have very many. We got Joker, Batman, and Killer Croc, maybe? I don't remember if Killer Croc was Arkham Asylum or Arkham City in this line, but at any rate, it's time now that we move right along and take a look at some size comparisons. First up, here is good old Batman alongside a couple other figures from this Arkham City wave. We have Catwoman with her Kartrashian sized ass and Raish Al Ghul with his crazy and a Hugh Jackman Wolverine looking hair. And I gotta say, these three scale well together. You gotta remember Catwoman is on 
stiletto heels of some kind, so she is going to be a little taller than if she wasn't. Getting them out of the way here. So we can make room for our two regulars, the Mythic Legion's Brother Mandibulus. Right there, dropping his club again. There you go. Don't want him falling over now, do we? The figure's worth money! We also have the infamous Mkuh Spawn, who is probably about, eh, even. Little bats here, so with that being said, it's time now that we wrap things up with some final thoughts. Overall, and if you missed the Arkham Asylum version of the Dark Knight here, then this is your next best option. That said, of the two, I think I like the Arkham City version a little bit more, uh, not just because the coloring, but because the cape takes up way less real estate on the shelf, and the grapnel gun is a little bit more, how you say, compressed? for lack of a better term. It's a lot smaller than the Arkham Asylum one, if memory serves me right. So, yeah, just the fact that this guy takes up way less space on the shelf, and he also doesn't have the kind of wonky eyes that the Arkham Asylum one was notorious for having. I mean, mine didn't really have that problem, but I know a lot of people's who did, so if you're into that sort of thing, then this is your Batman. See what I did there? So, with that being said, hope you guys enjoyed this review. Until next time, Catch you guys later.